So hey guys, welcome to another episode of English no Kru Haju. Today we have a special guest, Henry from Spoken or Get Spoken app. Hey Henry, how are you doing? Welcome to hey, the show. Hey Foster, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, it's a real pleasure. It's a real treat, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be super interested in what you have to say. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been great to uh, follow your progress uh, over the last couple of years, and uh, to see uh, how much success your podcast is having. Likewise, likewise, man. So, just a little backstory: Henry and I, I guess, first got in touch. Probably at least a year ago, I want to say. Our podcast was just starting off, and Henry is the founder or co founder of Spoken. Is that correct? Exactly. Uh, co founder and CEO. Cool, cool. So, Henry, you just want to give a little background for our listeners about what Spoken is, what you guys do? Sure, sure. So Spoken is a new way to learn English with native speaking instructors from the United States. Uh, we use technology to make lessons with native speaking instructors very affordable though. Uh, some of our packages are as cheap, for, for instance, are as cheap as three Brazilian real per lesson. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we use uh, software and live instructors uh, to deliver lessons uh, right to your messaging apps. So you can uh, use voice messages and text messages to talk to coaches. Uh, and you also get exercises that focus on what matters to you. Uh, for instance, if you're applying for jobs and the interviews are in English, uh, you can get exercises that help you with that situation or running meetings, for instance. Or if you just need to improve uh, certain parts of your pronunciation, so it's really a special plan just for you. That is that's really awesome. I've heard a lot of people describe it as having just like your personalized special coach in your pocket that is there when you need them and for whatever you need. Is that is that more or less what you guys are going for? That's exactly what we're going for. Uh, yep, your your personalized English coach uh, in your pocket, and you know we think there are a lot of great apps out there, but what people really want is to interact with native speaking instructors too. So we kind of are a combination of great apps like Duolingo or Babbel, but that let you also work with a live instructor who can correct all of your mistakes and who you can get to know and build a relationship with. That's really, really cool because honestly, I have been a little bit radical about language learning apps in the past just because I see a lot of students waste a lot of time and money uh, playing on Duolingo and it kind of irritates me sometimes. But I got. I think that you guys are really combining the technology component, the convenience aspect, and not leaving out the human touch, which I think is super, super important. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, you know, language is a interpersonal uh, behavior. It, you know, it, it exists to help two people communicate. And that's when we say interpersonal. You know, multiple people two people to communicate. Mm -hmm. So just talking to an app doesn't really feel natural and doesn't help us improve the way we want to because language is about interacting with people. <laughs> yes, yes. And it sounds very basic when you say that, but <laughs> that is a fundamental point that a lot of people forget about. Uh, exactly. And it helps people stay motivated. You know, when you're when you're working with a live instructor, uh, it, it helps you stay motivated. You build a relationship, and that helps. You know, language it's it's a it's not a sprint, right? Learning a language, you can't just run really hard, really fast, and achieve your goals. It's more of a marathon. You have to pace yourself and make sure you are disciplined around it every day to achieve your goal. So you have to 
really be somebody who can set goals and be very goal oriented. And I think having a coach or an instructor, we call our instructors coaches because they're there to help you achieve your goals. Yeah. I love that analogy of a, it's not a marathon. It's a sprint. I always just say you have to play, you got to play the long game. Um, you know, there's not going to be one day when I say, okay, now I'm fluent in Portuguese. It's just something that continues exactly. forever. I'm always trying to get a little bit better every day. So I think that's spot on. So Henry, one of the things that we hear from our listeners and our students all the time is they just don't have time to learn languages. And it's a valid argument. You know, people are really busy. They have jobs. They have families. They have social lives and things they want to do. And this seems like a problem that you're really addressing and really helping to solve. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, just how busy people are and how they can make English learning a little more convenient? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's the modern global economy. Uh, everybody is so busy all the time. Uh, but, you know, many of our learners are learning English because it will help open up uh, open the door for more opportunities in the global economy. How do you find the time when you're already so busy uh, to do that? How do you find the time to invest in yourself? Uh, that, that's a problem we see a lot. And one of the reasons we designed Spoken to be the way it is, is to help people fit their English learning into their lives. Uh, one way we do that is by having very flexible scheduling. You can just hit a button, schedule your lesson whenever you are free. Uh, also, if something happens, you know, you have a meeting that comes up, you can cancel and there is no problem at all. Uh, we try to fit into learners' lives. Uh, another thing with our format, as I mentioned, it's with voice messages and text messages. Uh, that lets people uh, take their lessons in many places. Uh, we have learners that take spoken lessons on the subway or the bus, or they can take it in the office. Uh, they don't have to always have a um, computer ready with video recording in a, you know, in a quiet room. They can be a little more flexible because you can speak when you have the free time to speak, uh, and you can try to fit it into your daily routine. Right, right. And I think that's so powerful, just the idea of, I don't know, like blocking out an hour every day for English seems, I don't know, like something that most people could do in practice, but it it is really difficult to do that, and most people don't have that opportunity. So the idea of just learning when you can, if you're on the subway, if you're in between meetings, that is super, super powerful. I think I think that's awesome. Yeah, we've we've found that the uh, more we can fit into learners' lives, uh, the more success they have. But you do have to be disciplined, of course, too. Um, you know, we just like anything else, uh, it, it still will only work for you uh, if you take the time to book your lessons and you make a little time. You know, you know, a few you know a few hours a week two, three, four hours a week. If you can break it up a little bit, uh, that will that will help you achieve your goals in the long run. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So Henry, Spoken also has this aspect that I think is really, really important. The idea of having a coach or kind of a guide or someone that can give you feedback. That is something that we are always trying to implement more with our students. And I just think the idea not only for really like language correction and guidance, but also for motivation, having that personal connection and feedback is so, so important. Um, would you mind talking about that a little bit and how that works with Spoken? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I completely agree that it's one of the most important things for making real improvements and not making the same mistakes over and over again is getting that feedback. And that's what our instructors or our coaches really focus on is when you're speaking with them, 
making sure that they pick up on pronunciation issues. You know, sometimes in Brazil, for instance, uh, you will hear Brazilians pronounce the TH sound as a D, dare, uh, dis, instead of really focusing on getting their tongue between their teeth, like the same sound as in think for their, this. <laughs> yes. So that's that is a big part yes, of that's... my daily <laughs> my daily job is correcting the th sound. Exactly, exactly. So making sure you're getting that feedback, and then uh, something spoken lets you do is listen to every single one of your messages whenever you want. So learners can go back and hit play and listen to themselves and really hear it. It's pointed out to them, and we find that really helps learners. Uh, truly understand uh, how they're sounding when they're placing their tongues in incorrect places, and it helps them make the, the adjustments. Uh, listening to yourself can be, I don't know, a little uncomfortable, but it, it, it really can. It really can. I, you know, I don't like the sound of my own voice, but, <laughs> but in learning a language, uh, it, uh, really helps you understand. Being uncomfortable can be a good thing when you're learning a language. Yes, I think it is probably a necessary thing. And I think self-recording is one of the most powerful and fastest ways to really identify your own mistakes and improve upon them. And I think the idea that you can also see your messages, not only listen to yourself, but also see your progress over time. I think that's amazing. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's always great, too, uh, to go out and have just casual conversations with native English speakers whenever you can. Uh, but one thing to remember is that sometimes when you're having a conversation, everybody is very focused on making sure they understand the other person and making sure they reply to them. So you're not always getting that feedback that a, a real instructor can give you. And they can pause you, they can pause and say, oh, hold on, this is a better way to say that. Uh, and that, that's another aspect that, you know, I think is really important for really improving is getting that feedback and then also making sure your instructors or conversation partners are always telling you the actual way that people say things. Yes, I think that is hugely important. Something I say a lot is that your typical native English speaker is probably a terrible English teacher in the sense that if they say like, oh, no, just say it like this, or most of the, most of the time, they probably will not want to correct you if they understand you. Um, but I think having someone that can really give you focused feedback, that's really important. And you're not going to get that just from going out and talking to someone on the street, you know? Exactly. That's the difference between a, a uh, normal conversation partner and a trained instructor is the instructor is not only trying to understand what you say, they're also trying to understand how you can say it better. Exactly. Exactly. So Henry, a problem that I've had with a lot of apps and just the education industry in general is a lot of students are kind of learning textbook English. I know in Brazil, you always see the same problems, like the same grammar points, the same phrases that they learn that just aren't super useful because they're not real English. It's not the way that normal English speakers speak. So do you think that spoken is a good way for people to learn the way that people really speak? at the same time that they're getting this personal feedback, et cetera? Yeah, great question. You know, our lessons focus on uh, real life situations. So some could be business, you know, running meetings, so business related. Some can be just general life, you know, having an argument with, you know, your roommate. <laughs> um, and so we focus a lot on natural expressions and collocations. And that's also something you're, coach can help you out with too. Um, we were talking about this earlier, but uh, how often we hear uh, Brazilian learners say, for instance, I have a doubt when they really mean, 
I have a question. Yes. The most overused word that I hear from Brazilians probably is doubt. I hear doubt or difficulty so many times where it's like, no, you just want to say question, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A, uh, you know, a doubt, doubt or difficulty that has a, you know, more of a negative meaning. Like I have a real concern about this. Whereas when you just want to know something, Hey, I have a question or may I ask a question? You know, most of the time, Americans and other Eng native English speakers will be able to, you know, understand you. Uh, but if you're not using the natural phrasing uh, that native speakers use, you know, it, it, some of the things you say may come across as, you know, a little odd, for instance. Yeah. If I were to say, I hear, for instance, you know, I would like to discuss about the weather. Sure. <laughs> a, a native speaker will understand you and will correct you. You know, you wouldn't want to say discuss about in a job interview uh, if English is important. That may raise questions because we would say, I'd like to discuss the weather or talk about the weather. But these phrasal verbs and collocations, uh, they, they can be tricky to pick up on uh, if you're not focused on those throughout the course of your learning. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to give our listeners the idea that these are you know, terrible mistakes that if you make these mistakes, that means you don't speak English. But I think it's really important for two reasons. One reason, if you are in a job interview or something like that, that is a big red flag that just, okay, maybe their level of English isn't as good as we thought it was initially. And then number two, if someone says, I want to discuss about the weather today, probably most English speakers they will understand you, but they're not going to make a real conscious effort to reach out to you and try to be your friend and make a connection with you, which is kind of the point of this whole game for a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like you said, there is a whole every every country, you know, has their version of textbook or school English. Uh, I taught in China for a year and I wanted to rewrite the textbook. <laughs> it, it was, it, you know, the phrases in the textbook, many of them we would never use, you know, in natural native English. So it's just useful. Even if you do have a good education background, it can be good to work with an instructor and make sure you're using the phrases that people use uh, in real life. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys have really tried to take the best from both worlds, you know, not only convenience and technology but also real feedback, real humans. It sounds like you guys have really kind of got onto something, kind of cracked the code. <laughs> I'm very proud of your work. Hey, well, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, you know, the most important thing for us is, you know, getting to know our learners and getting to learn more and more about how we can best fit their needs and help them accomplish their goals. You don't just start learning a language, you know, for fun, for the most, for the most part. Most people have, you know, a real purpose uh, behind learning English, um, you know, whether it is for taking tests to get a, a better education, open up more career opportunities, you know, find more clients or find more job interviews, or some people really want to, you know, travel anywhere in the world and language is your, or English in, in particular is your passport to do that and open doors. So, you know, our goal, just like any English instructor's goal, is to really help learners achieve their goal as quickly, but also, in our case, as affordably <laughs> as possible. One of the first questions when I always start with a new student is, why are you doing this? Like, learning a new language is a huge investment, not only with time, but with money. And most people have really profound reasons. And... I think you need someone that can address those reasons in a particular and personal way. And it seems like you guys are doing that in a much better way than most traditional apps and most traditional textbooks. So that's awesome. Well, I appreciate it. You know, it's a, a work in progress. Uh, I can't wait to look back a year from now and, and see, you know, some of the improvements we've made. I'm also super excited to see what you guys will be up to a year from now. 
So Henry, um, it's always a pleasure talking to you. It's great to have you on the show. Do you have a place or better, where can people, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you, more about Spoken? Sure, sure. So people can go to uh, getspoken.com, G-E-T-S-P-O-K-E-N.com. Uh, and there's a, a get started button. And if you uh, write in um, Foster or can you pronounce your podcast again? English New Ecru. English New Ecru. Uh, in the pretty good, uh, part pretty that good. Says, <laughs> in the part that says, where did you hear about Spoken? Uh, we will make sure you get a free lesson to try Spoken. And also, if you want to continue, uh, a 10% discount off of your entire plan. That's awesome. People love free stuff, and that's super generous on your guys' part. Really appreciate it. Hey, of course, we're we just want to spread the word. And if you you know you try a free lesson and you decide it's not for you, that's okay. We're just happy you tried it. Yeah, exactly. And there's really no excuse not to try free English lessons. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Cool. Well, I really appreciate it, Henry, and I hope to catch up with you again soon, have you back on the show again soon, and keep up the good work, man. Hey, likewise. Great chatting with you, Foster. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.